If you're not familiar with dinosaur reconstruction discourse, first of all, congratulations. Two, one of the big arguments has been over whether or not you should put lips on dinosaurs, and especially theropod dinosaurs. And so essentially there's two different kinds of reconstructions, and this paper looked at this idea and tried to find evidence to support either one. And when you look at it, they have this great figure that shows both of these two hypotheses. The first is that they were kind of croc-like. The teeth on T-Rex, for example, would have been showing outside of the mouth when it was walking around and loving its life. The other hypothesis is that they had small lips, not movable lips. They weren't, you know, puckering up or anything like that, but lips that would have covered the teeth when the mouth was closed. One of the main reasons this issue is a bit contentious is because their modern relatives don't really tell us a lot because they have such different lifestyles. Birds, which are dinosaurs, don't tell us a lot because they don't have lips, they have beaks. Crocodilians don't have beaks, but also don't have lips. And the crocodilian one is actually really interesting because one of the main purposes of lips is to keep teeth moist. By keeping the enamel wet, it actually resists wear more effectively. So when you think about crocodilians hanging around water, they do tend to hang around that water quite a bit more, which means they don't necessarily need lips to keep it as hydrated. There's other things about this that I'm going to get into here in a few, but this paper was looking at the structures present on the skulls of dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex to try and see if there was anything in particular they could pick out that it might have had in similar with some other reptiles, in fact the most notable lipped reptiles, which are the lizards. There's tons of lizards out there, and when you look at them, you might not think, oh, they have lips, but there's that little bit of skin covering their teeth, so when their mouth is closed, you don't see the teeth, and that counts. Like I said earlier, they're not movable lips the same way that ours are, but they are still lips. What they found across the lizards, including some lizards that spend a lot of time in the water, like the marine iguana, it's literally called the marine iguana because it spends so much time in the ocean, they still had lips, but also there was this line of lateral foramina going across the jaw just above where the teeth would be. These foramina allow blood vessels and also nerves to spread to that part of the face so that the animal can actually get some sense of what it's doing with its face, which obviously is important. You want to know what you're biting is something that you can bite and not a rock or something that's going to break your jaw more. Crocs, meanwhile, don't have these kind of foramina that are going really evenly across the jawline. Instead, their foramina are kind of spread across the entire skull, which makes sense for them, they're spending time in the water as a predator, and they have all these little sensory scales that are all across their skull that they're able to detect prey with. So it makes sense that they would need a kind of broader net of these foramina to send nerves everywhere so that everywhere is more sensitive. But modern crocs actually change their lip structures, because these authors also looked at Hesperosuchus, a very early crocodilomorph that would have lived on land and had teeth more like those of a dinosaur, they were narrow and serrated as opposed to conical like modern crocodilians are. And while they don't show it in the figure, they do state in the paper that Hesperosuchus also had that same lateral line of foramina. And so the authors wanted to make sure that this was the case, that these kind of foramina were actually going into lips in order to help the teeth of both dinosaurs and some of these early crocodilomorphs stay healthy. And so what they did in this case is they actually also took some teeth from one Displatiosaurus, a large Tyrannosaur, but also modern alligators, and they cut them open and ground the teeth real thin so that you can actually see light coming through it, and then looked at the kind of mineralization structures that were happening in the enamel. And what they found is that in alligators, the enamel is actually a lot thicker than it is in things like Displatiosaurus. And so it seems like with crocodilians, that extra enamel helps to protect the teeth when they do go out on land, because they do still spend a decent amount of time on land, and their teeth will dry out and end up getting worn even just by the wind pushing dust into the teeth. Again, Displetosaurus doesn't have that much enamel, which suggests it probably isn't experiencing as much tooth wear, and also little scratches and stuff do get preserved on these teeth, and yeah, it seems like compared to modern day crocodilians, Dinosaurs like Displetosaurus didn't experience as much tooth wear, which really leads into the idea that they were kept moist or damp most of the time, which leads into the idea that, yeah, there was probably some sort of skin covering, lips, covering the teeth in order to help keep them healthy. And the final argument that dinosaurs didn't have lips has mostly been, well, look at Tyrannosaurus rex's teeth, they're so big you couldn't get lips to cover them. And that's actually really easy to compare with. Because essentially you just measure the length and depth of the skull of the animal, and then measure the tooth height, and just plot it. And they actually used this on a lot of different dinosaurs, and compared it to the plots for the same thing in modern day lizards. 
And while there are a few outliers like Microraptor, most of them track really, really well. In fact, it's really interesting to see the one outlier in Modern Squawmates, Modern Lizards, Varanus salvadorii, or the Crocodile Monitor, which you can see in this image very clearly has lips, but when you see the skull, you go, wow, those are some really big teeth but it still manages to be able to fit lips around those teeth. It's not like those teeth are just constantly exposed. So in conclusion, dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex had lips. It's just one of those things where if you're trying to reconstruct a dinosaur as accurately as possible, you should draw it with some skin covering the teeth, as opposed to the teeth being exposed. And I'm not really one to start in this fight. I, I was never super invested on either side, but it's nice we have at least some conclusions and hopefully this kind of debate will settle down a bit online. Real quick, I do just want to say that one of the authors on this paper was last year accused of being fairly abusive as an advisor. Um, that The people who came forward to talk about this issue were very brave in doing so. And I've seen multiple people already say, well, why were they working with him if he was so abusive, all this kind of stuff. The unfortunate reality is science can move slow sometimes. So they may have already been working with him on this paper and essentially at some point he's too invested in it to take his name off of it we really need to have a little bit more understanding for the other author's position. I mean, the guy is still a jerk who is abusive based on everything I've seen, but we, we can't go and immediately use that as an excuse to attack the other authors. I just wanted to, to chime that in there because I had seen some of that discussion online.